with our sport, it's kind of unrecognized. People know what it is, sort of, but they always don't know how to describe it to another person. Hockey. It's my favorite sport. I've been playing for most of my life and been a fan for even longer. I just watched the Columbus Blue Jackets defeat the Tampa Bay Lightning while putting this together. When it comes to sled hockey, though, before 2013, I barely knew about it, which is kind of hard to believe now that it's such a huge part of my life. Not having a physical disability, I wasn't sure at first what my place was, if any, in an adapted sport. But the team was so welcoming to me, and it also became clear that they needed me. Grassroots sled hockey organizations like ours rely on volunteers to run things smoothly, and we always need volunteers, especially ones with hockey knowledge to help out on the ice. It doesn't matter if you're able-bodied. That's how I got started as a pusher for several players on the team. I had just finished high school, wasn't going to play in college, and I wasn't sure what my future with hockey looked like. Looking back, I'm happy to say it's still going strong, and I've become one of the coaches. Those experiences traveling with the team that I truly am a part of have been unparalleled. Meeting players from all over and learning from national team coaches, not to mention watching Team USA sled hockey win Paralympic gold with my friends. So I share a lot of these memories on social media, but there's one thing missing from my vocabulary. So do any of you remember the first time we talked about the sled hockey emoji? We were at a tournament um and we were in the hotel's courtyard having like a pizza party oh i do remember <laughs> that now <laughs> a, a big texting flurry got started oh yeah we must have been annoying everybody who wasn't there because we were we were memeing each other yeah my memes and- <laughs> the- <laughs> oh my gosh mason with the tiger yes <laughs> you're hearing from mason rachel and jamie three sled hockey players i coach one of my favorite sled hockey memories is the time we decided we need a sled hockey emoji we use an app called team snap to send messages to each other it's like a big group chat at this particular tournament a couple years ago everyone was in a silly mood as usual during the team dinner and we started sending silly pictures over that group chat People who weren't still around at the dinner or even at the tournament at all were getting in on it. Before we knew it, hundreds of messages were sent, including plenty of emoji. Then somebody said it. We need a sled hockey emoji. We all agreed and then somehow it was established that I was the one in charge of making it happen. I've been thinking about it to this day. If you haven't heard of sled hockey, it's the Paralympic equivalent to ice hockey. The rules are mostly the same, the difference lies in the equipment. In sled hockey, players use not one but two shortened hockey sticks. Double sticks have two purposes, handling the puck and propelling the skater forward. The players strap into sleds that are specially designed for the ice. They have metal frames and two hockey skate blades on the bottom. The closer the blades, the sharper you can turn, but the harder it is to balance. Players are propelled either by pushing, almost in a rowing motion, with their two sticks, which have ice picks on the ends, or by being pushed by a standing skater. It's a unique, intense sport where, like what's common with hockey in general, the community is tight-knit. Awareness for the sport is growing. On the world stage, sled hockey is easily just as hard-hitting as NHL hockey, but throw in steel bars and somersaults, making it a really exciting spectator sport. Sled hockey aired over 30 times on TV during the Pyeongchang Paralympics. I believe we'll eventually see more and more representation of sled hockey, But is it possible that we would ever see a sled hockey emoji come to life? Emoji are modern day cave paintings. Emojis are a way to represent our life in the form of pictures. What began as a method of adding emotion to dry instant messages has now evolved into a whole new communication method of its own. When scrolling through social media, it's not uncommon to come across a post absent of letters and solely made up of emojis, and yet, it gets a complete message across. Though we're at the point of being able to communicate in emoji alone, we still don't have an emoji to represent every word in the dictionary. To some extent, you can be creative with the emoji you combine, but some ideas are more abstract than that. If these images are our cave paintings and represent our daily life in the 21st century, why isn't everybody represented? 
Who gets to choose what objects, symbols, or concepts get turned into emoji? Whose daily life are the emoji creators representing? The set of emoji that you can type with on the standard smartphone keyboard is governed by a group called the Unicode Consortium. If you have an idea for a new emoji, anyone can submit a proposal. In the proposal document, you need to describe the factors that would lead to the new emoji's inclusion in the set. One of those factors is evidence of the term's frequency in image search engines. The search result must return a similar number of hits as a search for elephant. For sled hockey, that's not the case. But failing to meet this doesn't cause an automatic rejection. The most interesting of their criteria to me is how the proposed emoji breaks new ground. I see this as a way to spark interest in exciting sports that have been overlooked by many. There is potential for growth in terms of representation, of course, but also revenue. If you bring awareness to Paralympic sports, that creates a ton of new, highly marketable airtime. Imagine if companies could see the same profits they do from running ads during the Olympics, but doubled for the length of the Paralympics as well. Businesses should be key allies in the push for Paralympic awareness. So if corporations increasingly showcase sled hockey, and the new fans are talking about it, this is an emoji everyone can support. The first emoji to represent disabilities only appeared in 2019. As Stephanie Collins said in an article that year for Human Rights Watch about these new emoji, it is only right that people with disabilities, as the world's largest minority, are represented in and able to access culture and communication like this equally. These emoji include people in manual and power wheelchairs, a person with a white cane, prosthetic limbs, a person signing, and service dogs. These are great steps forward, but when you think about it, it's also the bare minimum. When a disabled person's activities cannot be represented equally by existing emoji, as is the case with standing hockey and sled hockey due to equipment differences, they have the right to an additional variant. The people who will get the most out of a sled hockey emoji, though, are none other than the players themselves. Coming up, we'll hear more of what they have to say. Okay, who's going to go first? You, Mason. All right. I'm <laughs> Mason Bailey. I'm 21 years old. I'm a heavy equipment operator, and I have spastic diplegia cerebral palsy, which means I walk with canes. There's all different types of it, but that's the one I have. Hi, I'm Rachel. Um, I play three sports, track, hockey, and color guard, if you count it. Um, <laughs> And um, my disability is called spina bifida. Basically, from my knees down, they don't cooperate correctly, so I have braces to help me stand. Uh, hi, I'm Jamie, I'm 16 years old, and uh, I do sled hockey, wheelchair track, and I just started wheelchair tennis last week. I have caudal regression and sacral genesis, which means like I'm missing the lower part of my spine. It kind of differs between different people. Some of them are missing more or less, whatever. And uh, my hips are also kind of like inwards. They created their own socket. So I kind of walk different. <laughs> okay, so I was wondering if you could describe what your social media presence looks like. My social media presence, um, I'm very heavy on Instagram trying to inspire and and I post a lot of related stuff to heavy equipment and just try to inspire people to live out their dreams. Um, so I only have Instagram and like mainly what I post is like all like the things that I achieve in sports or like family just to like show how normal my life can be too. Yeah, I usually just post when I'm with my friends or something, um, just normal things, like, I don't know. Um, I'm into music, like I love music. And so sometimes I'll post about that, also sports. Okay, so how often do you guys use emojis and in what context, like social media posts, messaging apps, things like that? Every day in any shape, form of writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too it's mainly it is every day 
um, but mainly like text messages between like my parents or friends and stuff. Yeah, I use them every day, especially messaging with friends and everything. Yeah. So there are currently 3,304 emoji. Do you feel represented by the ones that already exist? I feel like it would be cool to have a sled hockey emoji. (laughs) And I feel like a lot of other things that like we do or use with our daily lives is represented. Like there's chairs, all that. Yeah, they're definitely kind of reaching out there more, kind of trying to include more people. I One thing that I notice is that the top 10 emojis right now are mostly like the faces and the symbols like hearts and stuff. And those are really universal. So I think that is pretty cool. What would it mean to you if there was a sled hockey emoji? It would make me feel like I fit in more with the group. That's how I yeah. feel. I feel like it would bring up more representation within like the adaptability of different sports. And I feel like it would spread a lot more like information kind of people could figure out what it is and definitely would feel more included. One of the factors that can cause an emoji proposal to be rejected is if you can represent the same concept with a sequence of existing emojis. So For example, if we did like the wintry sled, the only sled emoji that I can think of, plus hockey stick. Um, Do you feel like that's good enough? No, I do not. I feel like with our sport, it's so unique in its own way. I feel like, like we need a sled hockey emoji. Yeah, I don't think people could figure that out just by looking at the sled and a hockey stick because a lot of people just don't really know about it yet it's not it's getting bigger but if like people don't know what it's about they won't it like won't make sense to them Mm -hmm. about like the sled and the stick just doesn't make sense but and also because it like they're in such a different part of like the spectrum of emojis that it'll like take a lot of time to find I guess so it like saves time Yeah, I don't feel like it works at all. I think that for a lot of adaptive sports, the equipment is the same or really similar. So like if you played wheelchair tennis, for example, you still use the same tennis racket as standing tennis. Um, Basketball, you can just use the actual basketball emoji. But uh, the hockey stick emoji is a long hockey stick. It doesn't it just doesn't look right. So even if you use it, like in sled hockey, you have two sticks. So even if you use two of the long hockey sticks, that's just like confusing. Um, So one thing I was thinking about is they have included like different gender options, skin tone options. And I think if they made a sled hockey player emoji, it would only be right to add amputee versions, a non-amputee version and a pusher player. But if they wanted to get around having so many new emojis, I would love to see one that is the hockey sled. Yes, Um, 100%. Agreed. Yeah. Do you guys have any other ideas for how sled hockey could be represented? I mean, I guess put just the sled and the blades. Maybe Mm -hmm. put the sled and like overlap the two sticks crossing each other like this. That'd be cool. I think if we had the sled, then it'd be easier to understand. I've been using hashtag sled hockey emoji every time I find myself wanting to use the sled hockey emoji. And it's not really the same, but I do feel like it gets a point across. (laughs) Yes. There's an emoji for both soft serve ice cream and ice cream in a bowl. If those don't share an emoji, then adaptive sports shouldn't have to either. I'm starting with a call out. Use hashtag sled hockey emoji to get the digital ball rolling and start a movement to bring awareness to the sport so it can gain enough traction to eventually become added to the list of official emoji. I'd also love to see your drawings of what you think the sled hockey emoji should look like. 
Just share them with the hashtag sled hockey emoji. The more people talk about sled hockey, the more people will realize how great it would be to have that emoji. Letting people know that inclusion matters is one of the best parts of the internet. We have the power to make people notice and encourage change. This is not only a win for the sled hockey and the adaptive sports communities, but it shows that we are one step closer to a more inclusive world. My favorite emoji would have to be the, uh, I guess like the smiley emojis, like the ones that have like, I don't know, fake smiles, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my favorite emoji is probably the laughing, crying face emoji. And my favorite emoji is probably the star eyed emoji. If you have a question, or if you know of any adaptive tech that you think should be featured in an episode, or if you just want to get in touch, email me at modernaccesspod at gmail.com, or you can leave a voice message on Anchor and it might get played on the show. The easiest way to support this show is to subscribe to Modern Access wherever you listen to podcasts. Modern Access is also on Patreon. You can join and get access to behind-the-scenes content. You can also follow Modern Access Pod on social media. Modern Access is produced and hosted by me, Coach Caitlin. This show's theme music was written by Quentin Wolf. Graphic design for Modern Access is done by Allison Menares. Thanks to you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>